Hey guys, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and alternative homes. In this week's video, we're checking out a toy hauler that's been converted into an epic nomadic tiny home. This build has one of the most versatile bed configurations that I've ever seen. And one of the best things about having a nomadic home that's also a toy hauler is that the entire back wall opens up revealing a new backyard every single day. If you guys like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time I publish a new video. But right now, let's take a tour of Megan and Jordan's tiny home that's built for a perpetual adventure. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Megan, and we're excited to show you our tiny home. The Perpetual, the Perpetual Adventure, Adventure Machine. Machine. When we first got married, we hiked the Appalachian Trail, Georgia and Maine, and we were living a really simple life. Ever since we finished, we, we missed that. And we were kind of getting comfortable in our life and not liking it. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we uh, were looking for our next adventure. Started looking at other options and I just randomly showed Megan a video of people living in buses, kind of as a joke. And then the next day she's like, let's do it. And I was like, really? I was completely on board. Yeah, yeah she was totally on board. And we just <laughs> didn't even look back from there. We just, just started going. We were thinking van, so we could get places easier. Right. We have two large dogs, so we realized they would take up the entire floor space. Yeah, so then we were going to do a bus. We saw people towing cars or doing two drivers, so they could have a smaller vehicle to get to places, and we just Part of our we didn't like that idea. to do everything together. Like, right. We... Travel together and not have to tow a car, and so then I looked up whether people do this in cargo trailers. We really wanted to do an aluminum trailer. Instead of a steel, they last way longer, they're lighter. And so we priced out a good one and ordered it. We went and picked it up, so we didn't pay the delivery fee. All said and done, the trailer that we bought was about $10,000. We spent a lot of time working on the design, coming up with different layouts and figuring out the pros and cons of each one. We came up with probably 12 designs and settled on a general idea of one. So then we started going in more detail with it and started modeling up a lot. I do a lot of CAD drawing stuff and... And he's really good at it, <laughs> really good at it. I think all in all, we put about 20 grand into the build. We've been living in the trailer for just shy of a year and a half. Yeah. We've got the truck and trailer together equals almost 50 feet. We went with a diesel Ford F-350 and with this, we barely even can tell that we're towing. Like it, it's so easy, there's so much power with it. It's, it's hardly even noticeable that it's there. Gas mileage for the Ford is an average of like 9.6, 9.7 in the mountains. So our trailer is a Discovery trailer, all aluminum. The axles and the hitch are the only parts that are steel on the whole thing. Uh, we went with aluminum because it's lighter, it lasts longer, it is a bit more expensive. We had to custom order the trailer because we wanted extra height. Typically they're six and a half feet tall on the inside and we went with eight and a half. Got a gas can on the front for diesel, for the diesel heater. The window up here is a house window that we got at the ReStore on sale for like 12 bucks. It's been kind of a problem. If you put a window on the front and it's a house window, they are not made for sideways rain. Drizzle, falling rain, they do just fine. But 60 mile an hour driving rain goes through it. It'll, it'll find the nooks and crannies and it'll definitely leak. So we tried to seal it once, still leaked, sealed it again. It hasn't been uh, raining since we then but we've driven in, so not sure if it seals or not, but definitely leaks, something to consider if you're doing house windows. On the sides, the house windows don't seem to be a problem because it's not driving rain. It's just, just running down the sides of it. They're not tempered. We were a little concerned that all the vibrations and 
hit a nice pothole while you're driving and that shock would cause them to shatter or crack or something. And so far it hasn't been an issue. We went with the 5,200 pound axles. We're close to the weight limit, but it, it's enough for us. On all five walls, we have these LED lights. When we turn them all on, it's just a big circle of light around it. It's really nice. And then we have eight 230 watt solar panels. This is the back of the trailer here. We've got our spare tire. I made a mount for it and bolted it straight to the back. We've had some tongue weight issues. We were a little too heavy for our uh, weight distribution system. We've moved some weight around on the inside and then put in these two items, the mini splits compressor and the tire on the back helped balance out some of that weight. The mini split back here is uh, a little odd because of how we had to mount it. We still want the ramp door to be able to open. So I welded up this whole frame, mounted this to it, and put it on hinges. The pins keep it solid against the door, and then the whole thing hinges out. So that just swings out of the way, and then we can bring the ramp door down from there. So welcome to the kitchen. People step in and you just see the look of awe on their face and we love it because we worked hard on this build. So we ordered the trailer with a V-nose, which the trailer itself is 18 feet long, but this gave us an extra two feet. So we took advantage of that space and we made it a nice round shaped kitchen. It allows one person to be at the sink and one person to be at the stove at the same time. We're all about using reclaimed everything. Fence slats for our walls, we have pallet wood for our doors, and barn wood for the countertops. <laughs> we wanted a cozy, rustic log cabin feel. Part of the cozy feel and look is the cast iron we wanted to hang on the wall. We don't travel with them up there, but I love the look. We talked about getting a farmhouse sink and it just wasn't in the cards. So we bought a normal stainless steel sink and we created an undermount sink ourselves. So wrapping around, we have three drawers here. Um, you'll notice we do not have an oven. We have a countertop oven that flips down. It's just a Ninja 8-in-1 foodie. It's great because it air fries, it bakes, it broils, it does everything for us. And then it just flips right back up. This little secret door <laughs> is access to our plumbing. Um, you can get down to our water heater, our diesel heater, and then we have a fridge and a 5.2 cubic foot freezer. We chose to do a chest freezer because we feed our dogs raw. And we can hold up to about 47 days of food for our dogs. Once we were on the road, at one point we were having some tongue weight issues. One area we realized was a substantial amount of weight was the sides of the drawers. So we cut out holes in the sides and we replaced it with dollar store cutting boards. They were just lightweight plastic sheets. By doing that, we were able to remove a substantial amount of weight. So moving into the center of the trailer, we have our bathroom. We used sliding hardware from like a TV stand, so it's a little smaller than you'd find in a normal house, but it worked for us. We used barn wood and parts of an old picnic table, and we made a barn door out of that. Sliding this open, you'll see our bathroom. We decided to make our own composting toilet because the composting toilets on the market are ridiculously expensive in our opinion. Our composting toilet is made of a bucket and then we added a urine separator. To take care of number two, we used sawdust, which takes some moisture out, and then we added an exhaust fan out of the trailer out the back. A composting toilet on the market often runs for $1,000. Our system is tops 50. We chose corrugated metal because it was fairly lightweight and copper piping for the shower. It's not a full wet bath, so we pull a curtain all the way around. Traveling with dogs, we also use our shower pan for a great place to put their water bowl. Um, she's a very sloppy drinker, so when she drips, it just goes right down our shower drain. Opposite the bathroom, still in the center of the trailer, we have our utility room. It's just a washer, it's not a dryer, but it works well for us when we have hookups. This is our closet. 
This is all of our clothes. We have three bins each. So our closet space is actually made of fence slats and then we added a painter's canvas. It was eight bucks and we just made it into the squares we needed. It's super lightweight and it keeps all our stuff in our closet. We used it for here, for our curtains and for the bottom of our bed. So down here we're in the living room. There's a 14 inch step. Our wood stove is our like centerpiece. We actually purchased this before anything else. We didn't have a trailer yet. We hadn't even ordered the trailer. We're just like, we want a wood stove. This is the Tiny Wood Stove brand Dwarf Stoves, the smallest one they make. We chose to go with this one because we really wanted this flat space so we could cook on it. So this is the flue for the stove and its proximity to the wall. We needed to do a heat shield. These are just the corrugated metal, similar to what's in our shower. They are spaced off the wall by roughly one inch and they have a space in the bottom and the top to let air flow through them. Our wood, this is fence slats, fence pieces. Megan did an awesome job of roughing them up, painting them, sanding them, and just give them that, that weathered fence look, that weathered wall look. And uh, I think they turned out really nice in this. The white in here versus the brown in the kitchen really makes the space feel like two totally different spaces. Let's take a look at the uh, electronics, the power system inside of here. Batteries, inverter, all the other stuff that goes with it. Uh, it's sitting on top of a board that's above our water tank. We have a 24 volt, 560 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Bought the individual cells and built our battery ourselves. The cost associated with that is, is so low. It was really easy to just get the information and feel confident enough to be able to do it. And the cost savings was phenomenal. <laughs> so I recommend doing it that way if, if, you're, if you're up for it. This is our step down from the kitchen uh, hallway area into the living room. Under the hallway floor, we have two drawers here that are fantastic storage. And they are eight feet long, made out of one sheet of plywood for each. And they'll pull all the way out into the living room. And then this is our counter for our business. It's got our 3D printer and our mill in it. And then this is basically where we put stuff up here to, to, to work on stuff that we don't want in the kitchen. Our couch turns into a full-size bed and has uh, three sections that pull out. So it's not just a couch or a bed. It can be uh, like an L-shaped couch or a U, kind of a booth shape. Uh, so it's very versatile, very useful for stuff like that. So our couch is pretty decent size, as you can kind of see by the giant dogs next to me. <laughs> Got a pretty decent amount of room. We can seat three people here and then we have two chairs we can put on that side and get, we've had five people sitting here. Our table swivels into multiple positions and can be detached. And then up here is our elevator bed. Ours is completely manually done. It uses constant force springs, functions very much like a house window. You take a house window and you raise it up some and you let go and it stays where you left it. It doesn't fall down or raise to the top. We have these L-tracks and these bolts that are mounted in something that is quick release, quickly moved. And we can move those in one inch increments, allowing us to change where the bed is at depending on our circumstances. We thought we would put it as low as it could go all the time. And really we're finding that this height right here is our favorite because it creates the two different layers that we have. It gives enough room to sit on the couch and enough room to be in the bed at the same time. So one really neat thing about this adjustment on this system is we can actually level the bed. If it's off level too much, we can just raise and lower the bolts here. There's been a few times where you're, you're standing like angled compared to the walls and you're like this is terrible <laughs> it's the only place to park but we really need to level this we're never gonna get to sleep so there's been a few times where we've done it with this height the window we get i don't know a little more than a foot 
of window in there and when you're laying down it's enough to be able to see out so we can quick look out there see if the sun rise is worth jumping out of bed and checking out. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with an all new unique home tour.